So, how do you transform this mediocre looking render into this much more beautiful looking one through changing only lighting? Well, I'm gonna sum up and present my process for improving this render in under five minutes. And I'll deliver it in digestible steps so that you can apply these tips to your own renders. Let's not waste time and let's get right into it. All right, now how are we gonna fix this? So I'm gonna start with this kind of crummy looking render which I've created for myself. And we're gonna make our way towards this. All right, let's look, take a look at what is lighting our scene because that's the most important thing we should. And if you're a beginner with lighting, I would recommend keeping it very minimal. Even in professional scenarios, you usually have a couple of very dominant light and all of the other lights contribute, but they're sort of supplemental. So just focus on the big important ones. This is definitely a big important light which has been chosen, but has this been executed well? I don't think so. we have also got that over here, casting light onto the side of the face. To be honest, it's not an awful move. There's still just a question asked here. Like, like, where is this light coming from? We don't have any motivation from it. Like, why is it here? So let's wait before we start making decisions like adding key lights and all of that. Because we want, ideally, to light this with a more natural thing and not like a studio light. And so firstly, to help with that, let's not restrict ourselves to the sort of boring daylight scene. Like, I love the blender sky texture. It's very dynamic. You can do a lot with it. Take it to, like, more of a Sun City sort of scene. It's cool. It's useful. But overall, you can get a lot of worth out of using an HDRI. So let's just switch over and use an HDRI right now, alright? And I'm going to be honest, if you find a really cool picture of a sky that you like, it doesn't need to be an HDRI necessarily. You see this picture here? That's not an HDRI, that does not wrap around the scene nicely, but it's fine. We're just going to use transparent background. It doesn't really matter that it's all stretched, it just matters that it's giving us cool lighting. Let's take this up to a strength like 3.8 or something. And boom, look at that. Suddenly we've got pretty complicated looking lighting. Instantly, we get all of this like nice like blue coloring on like all of the shadows and we get kind of like orangey like highlight bits. Like this looked like way less interesting before, in my opinion. This is cool. But it's like just it's just really different you know like we've got some really cool effects going on but it's not moody anymore you know it's not very atmospheric the lighting is not telling much of a story it's got emotion to it you know don't don't just think of lighting as like only presentation because it's an important part of presentation but like it's a storytelling element you know now that we've got this sort of lighting we don't really want this to be white so the question is like what does our sky look like well we're using a transparent background to get away from the kind of stretching that's happening right we've got all of this um stretching this is what's lighting our scene all right it ain't pretty it's doing some really good work for lighting, but it ain't pretty. But ideally, we can use the same image to come out back here. This is a lighting element. Like if I tug this down, all right, look at all of that awesome orangey, fiery lighting we get. And that's because this isn't just a base color thing. I've taken this, all right, and I've very simply just plugged this into the emission, all right? It's actually providing some lighting to our scene. It's subtle, but it's good. It's really good. It feels quite cohesive. And so now that we've bought that and got reference for like what the colors are, which are lighting our scene, we can make a more informed decision rather than just using a boring white for this area light. It, the whole scene is very blue outside of this really fiery thing. We kind of want to introduce a conversation between this orange color and our image because there's not really any of that here. We want to show some influence because we, like, we need to fake some influence because it's just not there. That's what our lights are doing in this natural world. Like we've got all of the building blocks here all around us. We've got all the foundation here. And so if I change this to like an orange color, in fact, we can use this eyedropper hot tip and just grab this color here. Now look at what this is doing. We have got colors talking to each other from the foreground and the background of the image it makes it look more cohesive like this this orange addition to our like foreground element really makes the background element feel more in line with it and that's good and it's also just pretty to have contrast because like this is all blue gray and suddenly now we have this side of it being more orange and orange and blue go so well together like chainsaw man really exemplified that very well especially in the animation for episode 8's ending now this is the last thing we can do rim light our main subject is is the graffiti. That's like the prompt for the challenge and everything. The center frame, it's like all lined up nicely. There's quite a lot of weight on this side of the scene. Like I'm not meaning that this car weighs a lot, even though it does, but it's like, it's pretty large. There's like these bricks and these bags. Then over here, we had absolutely nothing. It was just so empty, which is why I had the whole frame centered over here. But then the, the, the face was sort of squished off to the side. So I bought everything over here, but then yeah, that created this issue where this all feels quite empty. So I put this guy here, and I put this guy sort of roughly along this rule of third sign. Pretty good, but he just doesn't look like he has much weight to him. There's not much drawing your eye to him. He's just sort of there. And so I had this little rim light. And so it looks quite motivated. It looks like it has a purpose. Looks like the lighting has a reason. And that's good. It's using this this collection. If I remove that collection, that's what our rim light looks like, just kind of unobstructed. That's a bit strong. That's a little bit much. We're taking a bit much attention away from here. This this light is just out of nowhere. Like So we introduce this lighting link thing, and suddenly it's only influencing the stuff that we've chosen in a collection, namely these little cinder blocks, this bag, and the guy, um, who happens to be a zombie, but that's not really an important narrative thing. Oh man, I love, I love these Alright, well I really hope that that lighting tutorial helped you guys out. Thanks so much for watching. It's been Ease in Cinema. And
and I will see you guys in the next one. Feel free to check out more of my tutorials. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate any of you who have made it to the end of this. See you in the next one. Mwah.